I'm about to explain the aquarium cycle by making my wife a sandwich. What's going on fish nerds? Welcome back to the fish room. Actually no, this is my kitchen because we're talking about the nitrogen cycle today. Cycling an aquarium, cycling your fish tank. And what does that have to do with my kitchen? Absolutely nothing, but I don't care because this is how I want to explain it. If you don't know what the nitrogen cycle is or cycling an aquarium, you know, the fish tank cycle, you know, whatever term you've heard for it, you have been told that you need to do it. And if you're new to aquariums, you may be wondering, well, what exactly does that mean? And you've probably had people tell you, oh, well, you need to wait so many weeks after you set up your aquarium before you can add any fish to it. And, and you know beneficial bacteria you may have heard it explained loosely that way but if you're still wondering what is the nitrogen cycle how do I cycle an aquarium I'm gonna do my best to explain that here today okay so to explain why you need to cycle an aquarium fish poop and on top of that there's gonna be uneaten food. Sometimes you're gonna to feed too much, food's gonna fall down to the bottom. You know, if you have live plants, some of those plant leaves are gonna, you know, start to break down and rot in the water. And all of that waste, fish poop, plant leaves, extra food, all of that stuff is gonna break down in your aquarium. And when that happens, it's going to produce ammonia. All of this waste that builds up in your aquarium, poop and food, etc is going to produce ammonia. And the thing about ammonia is it's toxic to fish. Even in small doses, it's gonna stress your fish out. And, and as the dose gets higher, as, as the amount of ammonia in your water gets higher, the more and more deadly ammonia becomes. You may have heard people talk about ammonia burns when fish have been in a bag for a long time and fish waste is built up in that bag and it took too long to get where they were going the ammonia that builds up can actually literally cause chemical burns on the fish and if it gets too high it'll kill your fish so even a little bit of ammonia is a bad thing because it's going to make your fish very stressed out it's going to hurt your fish so you don't want any ammonia but again the fish waste is going to put off ammonia no matter there's no way to stop it you're going to have fish poop you're going to have food breakdown ammonia is going to be released in your tank and it's going to build up in your tank that is until beneficial bacteria shows up now this is ammonia oxidizing bacteria essentially it eats the ammonia so as this beneficial bacteria builds up in your tank it will actually break down that ammonia and it'll bring those ammonia levels back down and eventually it'll bring it all back down to zero unfortunately ammonia oxidizing bacteria don't eat the crust so that means you've got nitrites left over they took care of the ammonia but now you're left with nitrites the thing about nitrites they're way more deadly even than ammonia is. Ammonia in small doses will make your fish sick, give them some burns, and then once it gets high enough, it'll kill them. And in the long term, it'll kill them. Nitrite will kill them fast if nitrite builds up in your water. But now you've got your ammonia being converted into nitrite, so you're still not ready to put fish in until a different kind of beneficial bacteria, nitrite oxidizing bacteria shows up, they eat the crust, they get rid of the nitrite. They convert the nitrite into nitrate. And now you've got nitrates building up in your water. The thing about nitrates are they are toxic in high doses. In low doses, nitrate is not that big of a problem. Uh, fish can tolerate it. Plants will actually absorb it and take it in as nutrients. So nitrates themselves aren't all that bad. I mean, you don't want your nitrate levels to get too high because then it does become toxic. But nitrates are not so toxic that you need to keep them completely out of your fish tank. It's okay for you to have a low to moderate amount of nitrates in your tank and then just do a water change to get those nitrates out. That's all you gotta do to get rid of your nitrates is just do water changes. 
whether that's weekly or bi-weekly, whatever your schedule is, doing your water changes is what gets rid of the nitrates. Now, granted, a single water change isn't gonna get rid of all your nitrates. If you do a 50% water change, essentially you get rid of half your nitrates. Most of us, we do 10 to 20% water changes at a time. That gets rid of 10 to 20% of our nitrates at a time. Now, eventually, once we've had enough ammonia buildup that we've got a good colony of ammonia oxidizing bacteria to bring the amount of ammonia all the way down, then we can get a good colony of nitrite oxidizing bacteria to bring the nitrites all the way down. And from there, any ammonia that gets produced by our fish waste will get eaten right away by our ammonia oxidizing bacteria. And then the nitrite produced from that will also get eaten right away. So if you've got a good colony of both types of bacteria, that's when your tank is fully cycled because your ammonia and your nitrite will always stay at zero because those bacteria will immediately process that as soon as it happens, which will keep the levels down super duper low where you can't even detect it. And all you have to worry about is your nitrates, which again, you can handle with just regular water changes. Okay, so how do we get this to happen? How do we get from brand new fish tank, just set it up today, to now I have a fully cycled tank that's ready to add fish in it? Basically, you have to get ammonia into the tank to get the process started, and then it'll kind of take care of itself. But you just have to keep feeding it ammonia. One way of doing that, the old school way of doing that, that I don't really recommend, but you can do it, is to get some good hearty fish, you know, something like some cherry barb, something that's, you know, really sturdy, and put like one or two fish in per 10 gallons, very, very light load, and take care of those fish, feed them, they'll poop, you'll have leftover food, you will have ammonia spikes, because you don't have any bacteria in your tank yet, so you're gonna get ammonia, which means you gotta do water changes to keep that ammonia down. Your fish will be stressed out. They, if you do it right, they won't die, but they will be stressed out, because you're gonna have ammonia. But just do your water changes to keep the ammonia level down, but don't be so drastic that there's not enough ammonia to build the bacteria up and then you know it, it cycles on that way once you have enough of the one bacteria it processes the ammonia to create the nitrite so the nitrite builds up and that's an old school way of doing it the way i like to do it is with a fishless cycle and there's a few ways you can do a fishless cycle one you can just feed the tank with no fish in it and that fish food will break up and produce ammonia and you can even buy just ammonia and put in it. I don't, that's, that's a little extreme for me. Just put some fish food in there. The fish food will break down, produce ammonia, and then the bacteria build up and give it, you know, a few weeks, check your water. And as soon as you have zero and zero for your ammonia and your nitrites, and you do have nitrates, then you know it's doing its job. If you have zeros all the way across, Mm, you're not cycled because you don't have any nitrates. So there's no ammonia in there to get processed. But if you have zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and you do have nitrate, then you know that all that waste, all that ammonia is being processed all the way down the line to nitrates. Now, if you have some ammonia, some, nitri some nitrites, and some nitrates, just because you have nitrates doesn't mean you're done. You need enough bacteria that you have no ammonia, no nitrites, and then you have your nitrates. So where do these bacteria live? They live on your gravel, they live on your tank glass, basically any surface in your tank, especially in your filter. And that is the number one purpose of your filter, no matter what kind of filter you've got, whether it's a sponge filter, a hang on the back filter, a canister filter, a, a sump filter, doesn't matter. Whatever kind of filter you have, the number one purpose is to have a bunch of surface area for bacteria to live on, and then you're pumping that water through your filter to run that water past the bacteria so that bacteria can take out anything that's in that water, ammonia or nitrites, process it, and get it neutralized so that you're not hurting your fish. Everybody, when they first get into fish tanks, they think, oh, I've got a filter, that's gonna take care of the fish poop. Eh. 
I mean, if you're changing out your filter pad, it will get the physical poop out, but it's not gonna do anything for the ammonia unless you have bacteria living in that filter and then water going through that filter so that bacteria can process it. That's the reason for your filter. That's the reason for cycling an aquarium. All right, guys, I hope that was a good explanation. If this video helped you understand the nitrogen cycle and how to cycle an aquarium, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions at all. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments below as well. Huge shout out to my wife for making a cameo in this video. Big thanks to her. And I wanna say thank you guys for watching. You're awesome. God bless you fish nerds. I'll see you next time. Hey, make me a sandwich.